Okay. So we've decided to put some shelves in our little wardrobe on our EPRO 19 FBS. The space under the TV is just wasted for us. So we decided, like I said, to put some shelves in there. We don't want to drill into the wall of the EPRO because it's so thin. You can't have any real weight on there. So what we're doing is we're taking some boards and we're cutting them the length of the sides. The depth of that wardrobe is about eight and a half inches and the height's about 43 and a half. Problem is on the very front, there's a lip where the uh, front fascia mounts to the, or front portion of the cabinet rather, mounts to the EPRO itself. So it's about eight and a half and I've got an eight inch board, which actually measures about seven and a half inches total. Uh, we bought some pre-primed pre pine that we'll paint later. We're gonna make two sideboards. You can see I've got a measured here, 43 inches on this end, 43 inches on that end. That way I could use the manufacturer cut on both sides. It's pretty straight. And then I'll have this piece in the middle. And then what we'll do is about every two inches, two, two and a half inches, we're gonna drill a partial hole and we're gonna put some little uh, uh, cabinet pegs in there so that we can adjust our shelves as we see fit. We were not tied to anything. And this other board, we're gonna cut some cross shelves about 30 inches wide, give or take. So we can have two or three, maybe even four shelves in there. And they'll be easy to come out, that way we can get to our inverter door. That's very important. I don't wanna put anything permanent in there, just in case we need to get to that solar inverter. You don't wanna to have to fight with it. It's a lot easier to just take your games or whatever you're storing in that, that cabinet off and then pull your shelves out than it would be to unscrew everything and leave holes and waller them out. Let's get started. Brandy, I will need a hand from you. Sure, let's put that down. Okay. So we're doing a little test fitting, as you can see over here. This little wardrobe is designed to hang your clothes in. There's little, little hanger hooks up in here. You may or may not be able to see but we're tall or taller and our clothes don't hang very well in there and even if they did you can't put much in there we just came back from a two-week trip um, on the road we went out west we went to utah and colorado and it didn't really work for us for much we had our canned food in the bottom but it was just a ton of wasted space so these boards i cut i'm just doing a test fit right now to make sure they go in there i cheated and went ahead and threw one in if you can come over here you can see what i was talking about that lip on the bottom yeah. you get that little lip down there on the bottom there's a little lip like a little tack strip or something that the, uh, the bottom part of the cabinet fastens to and so it keeps you from being able to sit flush there but if you push that back it sits in and so my plan is we're going to put some velcro on the back of these guys so that there's something to give it a little bit of extra support although I don't think I need it and then we're going to have the shelves in between which will keep them from scissoring so we'll see how it works it's all a all a learning curve right now but we'll have some more storage in here so right now we're measuring where we're going to put our pegs and I'm going to use my straight edge I flushed it on my factory bottom here and I flushed it up against the side it's a pretty straight board and I'm going to use that as my spacer on either side. So I'll flip it, do the other side. We decided to measure up six inches from the bottom so that we can put, you know, canned food and whatnot on the bottom underneath the shelving system. And you'll have a shelf here with a peg on either side. We found our middle point, which ours is 43 inches long. So 21 and a half inches long is our middle point. So I marked it right here. And I put one below at 20 and one above at 23. We'll drill our quarter inch holes there. And at the top, we haven't really decided how close we want to go. So I'm going to give ourselves some, some leeway. So from the middle, I'm going to go up uh, to 35 inches here. And I'll continue making my one and a half inch spaces. So 35 inches, I need to bring it down here so I don't have parallax when I'm on the line. 35 and a half, so 38. 39 and a half, and that'll be good. So we've got four on the top, four on the bottom, three in the middle. That way we've got some, some adjustment. I'll take my clamp loose, and do the same thing on the other side. As you can see, 
if you get this down here, the idea is to use these little pegs and put them in my, my holes. I don't have a drill press. I'm using a, just a hand drill. Um, so it's not gonna be as, as accurate as I want it to be. But what I did was I made a couple of little uh, uh, 16th inch pilot holes to put the bit of my drill in so that it's not walking on me. And they should be in the same place. Now I don't wanna drill all the way through. So I'm gonna drill real slow. And I just wanna get as deep as that little peg is. Some people will take tape, measure it against your drill bit, and then put some tape around there. But I'm just eyeballing it. And then, you know, dig it in there a little bit and I test fit, make sure it's flush, and it is. So I'll do the same thing here. I'm not going through. Test fit, make sure it's all the way in there, and it is. So those should be far enough apart that it'll give my my board across there. It'll be this way. Stability. And as long as it's on the same level there, it should be pretty straight. So we fitted our shelves in, these are 28 inches, and we put our pegs in. We just got these at Lowe's today, little pegs, and chose which spot we wanted to put them in, and made sure they lined up. It's perfect for our canned goods all across the bottom, because they're heavier, you want to put them on the bottom run. And we're going to fashion a, if we can't find one, plate holder be able to stack our plates up for easy access and our bowls will fit in nicely also and I just noticed this too if we want to put our cutting board in we can just stick it right there We've got an area for our games we like to bring games and puzzles with us and then we can stack that up nice and neat and then we got some little tubs today for our silverware, which is in the dishwasher right now. But silverware in these, we have two of those. We can just put them in there and can opener and such in the larger one. As for easy access, you're ready to go outside and eat. You just grab your utensil holder and you're ready to go. They also came with these little guys too, just a lighter for your, you know, fire and all that. And also I thought you could use one, put your keys in so you knew where they were all the time. And just grab it out when you're ready to go. Or if your remotes may fit in there. Or change even, you know, if you have a pocket full of change. We got that. So we've got one more of those and they just fit in there absolutely perfect. Um, so this is our upgrade we got done today took no time to do it 30 bucks um so we're super happy and i think that's good what do you think josh still really easy to to take that middle shelf out mm -hmm. your inverter is right there behind that panel if you look in the uh the epro the flagstaff epro fbs 19 fbs so if you needed to get into that for whatever reason you've got four little screws you have to take out in that middle shelf easy access Good to go. What other thing we're going to do just to sure it up? Those side boards that I cut. We got some command strip Velcro. They're rated for 12 pounds. I'm going to put several strips of it down the back so that I have something a little extra to hold it up there. Not that I think that it would fall. Those shelves are going to keep it from scissoring. Uh, but uh, as you see, it goes in pretty easy. I will show you this though. Some we may have a harder time putting that top shelf in. If you do it the way we did. It took me just a second to figure it out, but um, you can't just slide it in because it has these stops on the side. And because of that little hanger rack up top there, it kind of so, gets in the way. You just put one side in first and get him in there.
and then just put your other ones in on the other side. I know it's simple and easy, but it may save you a few minutes. Yeah. And you can see I drilled some extra holes so we have some uh, ability to adjust if we want to put some taller stuff in that top or bottom stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the other things I'm going to do, I didn't do in this video, is along the front, as you can see, things can still slide forward and hit that door. And those doors aren't real uh, sturdy. I mean, they're fine, fine quality doors, but when you're going down the road or if you're doing boondocking, some of the places you get into can be a little bouncy. Um, we noticed that we come in and we find um, our, drawer, our yeah. drawer was open, our GFCI covers were off. Yes. Uh, those are just clip on things. It's not a big deal, but you know, you don't want stuff falling out and, and banging up your new camper. So we're going to put a little, uh, little something along the front there, just to kind of keep things from sliding off. Especially on that uh, on the, the top shelf and then the, the third shelf there that we have that we plan on putting our dishes. Just a little lip, maybe a piece of uh, half this dowel okay. or a piece of square dowel or something. Something just to be a stop. But as of right now, all we've got left to do is, is that stop and a little bit of paint, some lipstick and rouge to make it look pretty. And we'll be all set.